Hey, Seth David here with the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, and in this edition of Nerd's Guide to the Galaxy, we're going to talk about how to back up your QuickBooks Online information to Airtable for reference purposes so that you can uh, start a new QuickBooks Online company file. And, and so this is like a little bit of background or context. I get this a lot where a client comes in the door, they want me to take over their bookkeeping, and I really want to start a brand new company for them in QuickBooks Online. Uh, certainly if they come to me, you know, with their records already, you know, in desktop, but even when they've already been working in QuickBooks Online, I just find that it's often uh, better to start a brand new company file. Frankly, very often what comes in my door is a mess, and I don't even know how useful having that data is, but that's where I get a bit of pushback oftentimes when they say, well, I have a lot of like client data, sales and invoices and things I need to look up, and I get that. And so this, I think, is a process where if you can show your client uh, what this process looks like, you can likely convince them to let you create the new QuickBooks Online company because you'll show them uh, when you follow along this process I'm about to show you how not only can the data be archived and easily referenced, uh, you might even argue it's a better and easier way to reference the data uh, in Airtable versus, you know, being able to, versus digging it up from QuickBooks Online's own reporting. Let's take a look at my screen and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to run a uh, sales by customer detail report. So we'll go to reports and since I know what I'm looking for, I'm just going to type it sales by customer detail, sales by customer detail, right? And then we're going to do some cleanup. We're going to organize this a little better. First of all, for demo purposes, I'm going to set it to all dates. In your case, you would want to set this based on whatever date range you need to archive. So it's as of this recording, right in the beginning of 2023, in theory, somebody coming in my door now, I would want to archive everything from the beginning of time until December 31st, 2022. And of course, then we would reconstruct anything for the current year going forward. So uh, one quick tweak. Over here, we're just going to say group by none. I don't want see how what it does here is it's it, it does groupings based on customers. I want to get that out of here, so I'm going to change that setting and I'll just click run report. Let's also collapse that so we have a little bit more room to work with. Over here, this is a quick way to identify columns that you'd like to make sure are included. So we want the customer and the account, right? And then this is a weird one. There's no like save. You just kind of click away or click anywhere else on the report, or click the gear icon again, and uh, it refreshes. Still not going away. And this kind of thing will happen, so just hit refresh on your browser. All right, and then of course we want to make sure that those changes took. So let's try over here. Okay, so we've got customer and account. And now we want to change the order of them. And I think it's going to do it to me again. Oh my God, I'm going to kill you. Okay, great. Customize, change columns. Let's go with uh, the customer. So we want to move that up, right? Maybe somewhere there. Right, so maybe customer goes under, let's put it after transaction type. Okay, and then the account we can put after memo or description. This is entirely up to you. You can see you just click on these little sort of, I call them cheese grater icons. I don't know what the official name is for them, but uh, you can select with those. You click with your mouse and you can drag them to reorder them any way you like. Okay, and then I'll click run report. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So now we have the makings essentially of a flat file, which is what we want, right? Now we got rid of the grouping by customer, but that's why it was important to have a column for the customer because we definitely want that distinguished in here, okay? Now we're gonna export this to Excel and then we're gonna set this up in Airtable. So should just take a second to export this. Obviously, if you're dealing with a lot of history, that export's gonna take a little longer. Right, and so what I'm going to do because I I literally just need this to copy and paste stuff into Airtable, um, but I'll just clean it up to make sure that there's nothing that's going to kind of get in my way. 
right? So I just, I bang that wrap text option once and bang it again just to make sure nothing is formatted for that. If you're really worried about like losing anything that you might need to get back, just make a copy of the tab, right? Control click drag is by the way how I did that so seamlessly and quickly. And then I'm just gonna get rid of anything I don't absolutely need. And I don't care about the balance and I don't care about the total here. And then with the whole range selected, I'm just gonna highlight it and turn it into a table real quick. This just makes it easier to manage. Uh, you will likely, hopefully, have a lot more details in terms of what's in your memos and descriptions. You're definitely going to want to include that, right? So I'm going to just give this a quick save, and let's move it over to my other screen. And then I want to show you how to set this up in Airtable. Now, very quickly, just to give you kind of a sneak preview of what it's going to look like, right? So here's my example, and this is using sample data that, again, when I get a client now and they want to see what I'm talking about, I can just show them this sample version of it. And you can see I've got, it's very simple, basically three little registers here. These are called views in our table. One that's just got everything. Another that has a group by customer, just like it was done in that report. And another one that's by customer and within that by product and service. Now, mind you, this is at, at this level right here, this is beyond what you could do in QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks Online can't get you multiple subgroupings and subtotals like this. You only get one subtotal, which was, for example, by customer. And I can do a separate report that does it by service. But I can't get the, the layered sort of tiers like this in QuickBooks Online. So already, that's an example potentially of why this is even a little better in some ways. Uh, you wouldn't want to build your whole accounting system out in Airtable, although you can. I've got videos on that. Um, but now let's go create a base. I want to I want to show you how to create this from scratch. So I'm just going to create a new base. I'm going to ignore the getting started dialog, okay? And I'm just going to call this my sample uh, customer backup. All right? You can call it whatever you want. Now initially. You have a blank table here, right? And so I'm just going to move this back up onto my other screen because I'm going to actually use it as kind of a cheat sheet as I go through this so I make sure I don't forget anything. So we're going to call this Sales Transactions. And I just double clicked it to open up the dialog to rename the table, right? So this is a table. And here where it says Grid View, I can double click this. And this is going to say All Transactions. So the first thing you want to do is get all the data copy and paste it in here. Then we're going to reconfigure some columns to change the type. And then we're going to create the other views that show you by customer and then by customer and product or service, which again, by the way, we needed to make sure that the product or service column was included in the export that we took from QBO. And sure enough, it is there. Okay. So let's get to work. I'm going to take a look at my Excel file. And the first column I have is the date. But we're not going to use the first column in Airtable for the date. The first column in Airtable is kind of a special column. If, if you've ever had experience working with databases, that first column is what's called a key, meaning usually it's going to be unique. Each row is going to have a different, you know, never be repeated in that column. And so for something like this, uh, it makes sense to create something called just a transaction number. And it's sort of arbitrary, but what I'll want to do is just use the type auto number here for the field type and save. And that way it's just very simple. It's just numbers the rows, right? And that can be useful, especially if you're trying to, you know, collaborate with somebody on this and you can say, hey, just refer to transaction number three, right? And then uh, it'll be really clear how to find what you're talking about, okay? Now we'll do a date column. So this I'm just gonna call date and the field type sure enough is date. Okay, and I'll create that field. And then the next few columns we're going to create, because we're going to be copying and pasting data in, we're going to do them all pretty much just as text. And then we're going to reconfigure the columns once we have the data in there. And when we get to that part, I'll explain exactly why that's important. So everything's going to be single line text. Uh, the next one is going to be customer. Get my mouse out of the way. Okay, and then I'm going to just duplicate this. So right click, duplicate field, double click. We'll have... Uh, this is going to be transaction number, but this is the transaction number from QuickBooks. Okay, and that one will probably stay text. We can talk about whether or not we would want to set it up as an actual numeric field. Uh, so transaction number, then we have the product 
for a service. Okay, and again, we'll set that up as text for now. Duplicate field. Next one is going to be called memo or description. Okay, uh, duplicate. Next one, I have to expand my Excel file here. Okay, next one's going to be the account. And we'll duplicate that. And we have the quantity. Duplicate. Sales price. Okay, and then the amount. So this would be the total. We could just take, we could and probably will in another few minutes when I start going back through. First, we got to drop the data in. So stop. Just whatever you're doing, stop. Pause the video and open up an Airtable database. If you haven't already done it, do everything I've done so far in this video. Go into QuickBooks Online, run the report, make those tweaks, export it to Excel, right? Clean it up and then start building an Airtable database. Get at least as far as I've gotten so far. Pause this video right now uh, and get caught up with me. Otherwise, if, if you go much further than this without being caught up with me, you're gonna be lost. Of course, you can go back through the video later, but I'm trying to save you some time and make this the best possible learning experience I can, okay? So now that we've got these, uh, everything that we need in place, I'm just going to go copy the data from Excel. So I'm in Excel, I'm in the date column, and I'm gonna click in here, and I'm gonna paste the dates. Now it recognizes that the, the, the list that I'm pasting is longer than I've got room for here, because I've only got three rows. So it confirms I wanna expand the table, I'll do that. Okay, and then customer, transaction number, product or service, since every column from there kind of conforms exactly, I'm gonna just paste everything in all at once. And I'm just going to scan across and make sure everything looks kind of normal. All right. Now, let's just go column by column and convert things. So the customer, I want to create as a drop down, right? So I double click and we're going to change the type to a single select. It confirms and it recognizes, you know, that there are items in here that are repeated. So it's only going to create one instance of each. Trust me, I've tested this. That's why I know to give you this tip. And so I like the color it options. By the way, you need a paid air table account to get the full color palette that you'll see in mine. Okay, and instantly it converts this to a dropdown. So if for any reason I wanted to add data into this, I can, and it's nice and handy with the uh, dropdown, right? This I might want to call like reference number because this could be a check number or, you know, whatever other kind of reference number I might have. Okay, the product or service I want to also change to a dropdown just like I did with the customer. So again, I just change the type to a single select. Now notice what it does, you know, in QuickBooks, when we have a, like a sub item, um, it's gonna create the levels here, the way we rendered the report, and this is on purpose, it just, it keeps it together and separates it by a colon, right? So I have plumbing, colon, plumbing services, dash clean out, and plumbing, colon, plumbing materials. So that's how that's gonna work. Okay, and it creates it all here. This one evidently didn't have a, product associated because it's actually a markup that was clearly done on one of the invoices, okay? Memo description we can leave as text. You might even take this one and convert it to long text and enable rich text formatting. Uh, the account we can also convert to a dropdown. Again, single select and save. Okay, the quantity, uh, we just want to analyze the data for a second to see what it, what we need it to look like, and then we can change this to a numeric. So I can see we've got some negative numbers, and I can see we've got a decimal, right? So, and you'll see how that informs exactly what we want to set up here. So if I do new number, okay, the format it allows for a decimal. I need to allow for negative numbers. The precision uh, always go to two decimal places in accounting, right? 
So change that, it converted beautifully. Here we have, we're just gonna wanna do currency for this and we have a column type for that. So we go currency, okay. Uh, allow negative numbers just in case. I didn't check to see if we'd need them, but better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. All right, and so that should work here and boom. And the sales price, I can just quickly scan and confirm. So 20 times 250 is gonna give me 5,000. Let's write a quick formula. Again, this way, if we do happen to decide to incrementally add additional data to this and we're somehow doing it manually, uh, this kind of thing is already taken care of. So for the column type, we're gonna do formula. And the formula is very easy to write in Airtable. You literally just reference the column. So I wanna take my quantity, right? Times is always denoted with an asterisk in computers, right? Times the sales price. Okay, and then click save. And once we've established, once I've saved it, so Airtable understands what kind of data it's looking at, then we can go back into the formatting and set it to currency. If we try to do that ahead of time, it wouldn't have let you because it doesn't know what kind of data uh, it needs to format here, right? And then you just confirm that we're getting the same result here, right? So now it's dynamic. I can actually go in here and I can add data. If I realize if they say, hey, it was only January, late December, we made a change to a transaction. You know, we actually sold two of these to our customer. I can just go in here and change that and it changes the total, right? And Airtable does keep a log of all the changes. So it shows me exactly what changes I've made and when it keeps the uh, revision history for up to one year, okay? So now we've got the hard part done right? Because even if you have years and years of data, you saw, what I just did there is exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. It doesn't matter that you have a ton more data than I do. It's still the same exact process and it, it shouldn't take, it may take a little bit longer because you may need to wait for everything to kind of update as you're copying and pasting and converting the columns should be super quick at that point. So now let's create our other views. Okay, we want to do first by customer. So I'm going to make a copy of this view. I right click, duplicate view. And I always name it so that I know exactly what I want to create. Because uh, the way we name these things, of course, when we're talking about doing what we're going to do, which is groups, um, the name kind of tells you how you want to group. So this is going to be by customer. And really simple, we just click group. And it gives you the first like few fields that you might want to do this with. So I choose customer, it happened to be right there, and boom, done. Okay, now I will duplicate this one because the next view sort of builds on this one. And we're going to call this by customer and product or service. And all I'm going to do here is add a subgroup in the form of the product or service. Notice here you can choose how it gets sorted first to last or last to first, or how it gets grouped rather. Um, and then here you can show groups with no records or not. You know, So go through these things when you're learning a new app and hover your mouse over like I'm doing, just so you understand exactly what does what. These things are not here for good measure, they're here so that, because they're, they actually do something. And so you wanna start learning you know, what you have available to you in terms of what you can do. Now I just accidentally added a row, so we're gonna right click and delete that. And that's it, folks. That's basically the whole deal. I've given you everything you need to know how to get this set up. Once you get this far with it, I'm sure that you can get ideas on your own for how to take this further and further and further. And if you do, please, please, please reach out to me. If you're watching this on YouTube, just post a comment. Let me know, hey, by the way, I did this, this, and that with it. And I love nothing more than to hear your feedback in terms of takeaways that you've gotten from these videos that I do. And of course, if you haven't by now, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, again, give me feedback wherever you're watching this by posting a comment. Let me know what you got out of this and what was really helpful to you. Let me know if there was something that wasn't helpful. Uh, that can only help me get better at my job. As always, I hope you learned something here, had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you in the galaxy.